regular season finally kicked off last night, and the Warriors are already undefeated. How about that? Could Jason Garrett be getting a contract extension in Dallas? That is the question. But we start with the Giants, whose owner is not happy with Odell Beckham Jr. Hey, Aren't all the teams that don't lose undefeated? I think that was the joke, Chris Carter. Oh, okay. right. It went over your head. Man. Start off with a bang. <laughs> start off with a shot. Uh, we start this morning with the Giants' $95 million man who had a few emotional outbursts on the sideline during last Thursday's loss to the Eagles. That's combined with some questionable comments he made about his quarterback, and criticism of the team's play calling. It was the final straw which prompted Giants owner John Mara to basically say, all right, enough is enough. Speaking to reporters, Mara said he wants Odell to stop talking and start focusing on just football. I wish he would create the headlines by his play on the field as opposed to what he says and does off the field. I think he needs to do a little more playing, a little less talking. Cece, you know that this Giants organization, you have to sort of do a lot for John Mara to come out and call out one of their players. They're very protective of everyone. What was your com What was your reaction to what John Mara had to say? Um, Mr. Mara, he, he's right. He's correct. Um, he's given Odell a warning. Now, they've given him plenty enough warnings um, because uh, you're right to the fact that you have to do a lot of things for their family to be able to go. Now, they're at the owner's meeting, so now they have to speak on it. And they have to... And, he can't just blatantly just lie to people like, oh, yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy with our, our leader. I'm happy with the guy in the organization I've invested the most money in. So, no, of course he's not happy because they want your star player to be an extension of the ownership and of the head coach. And the head coach has a five-year contract. And they're expecting ownership. They're expecting Odell to support the head coach. Gettleman has a long-term contract. They're expecting Odell in his comments to support Gettleman in the decisions that he made, even if you don't believe in him. Either tell him, I won't have any comment about him, but you have to try to put a positive spin because when they pay you that kind of money, they're not paying you just for your performance. They're paying you for the image, for the branding. They're paying you for team leadership. Whole Sterling Shepard, Ingram the tight end, the influence you have on them. That's all a part of signing that contract. And when they decide to go with Eli Manning, regardless of how you feel, regardless of what the truth is, this is the problem. When you're on a team sport, the truth don't matter. Like, people don't want it. You don't need to tell the truth because you're inside the team. We're outside the team, so we can report on what the truth is. Eli Manning, at this point in his career, is not very good. He hadn't been good in a long, long time. That's my job. Your job, Nick's job. That is not OBJ's job because when you do that, you put yourself in conflict with the ownership, with the general manager, and with the head coach. Is it fair to say, though, that that is the conversation the Giants don't want? To have, which is why Odell and his interview with Josina Anderson is an easy scapegoat. Does everyone at the table agree that whether Odell does that interview or doesn't do that interview, the Giants are one and five? They, sure. Right? They were one and four. They were one and three leading into that game. They've lost the two since then. They didn't lose the game in Carolina because of the interview. They didn't get blown out by Philly because of the well, interview. The owner did talk about he's not happy with Odell and he's not happy with the team. He said the team being one and five made him sick. So it wasn't as if he was trying to say Odell was the excuse. Now, people who do television shows and things like that, I'm not making an excuse. I'm just trying to tell you, when you signed up for that contract, you signed on for a lot of things that now it seems like all of a sudden you have forgotten. Well, listen, I... I I think that is a fair criticism. When he signed up for that contract, he signed up to be a leader. He signed up to be part of the solution, not part of the problem. And obviously, that interview with Josina Anderson, even if, and I think you make a good point, even if the things he said in it were accurate, doesn't mean it's his position to say it. In fact, it's his position to say the opposite. It's it, you, I mean, you would say when he's asked, is Eli part of the problem? Is it, it's his job as a leader to lie. No, Eli's not part of the problem. Eli's part of the solution. Like, whatever it is, put a positive spin on it. When you take that what did LeBron do last year with the Cavs and his teammates? Right, I, I, he blatantly just lied, 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 lied. But in so doing, it helped the team. It helped its cohesiveness. It didn't bring any other problems out. We knew the, the truth, of course. <laughs> like, of course. But see, I'm not arguing with you on that. I, I'm, I'm saying after having talked to you about that for the last week, I, I have come around to your side of it that sometimes it is the job of a team leader to not tell the truth. I understand that part of it. 
The point I'm making is, for while the owner says, yeah, I'm disappointed we're one and five, it is, it is an Odell is an easy scapegoat here, and it's an easy way to have the focus of the issues with the Giants be about the diva brash wide receiver rather than how about the fact that they seemed like they threw good money after bad with Nate Solder, that they were wrong in trusting Eli going into his year 15 season. All of those things are the bigger issues with the team. And we're talking about Odell's interview from two weeks ago that has nothing to do with their record. If anything, it's been- no, It does have something to do with their record because if they didn't have the internal team, he did apologize to his team. This was yes. before, he apologized before they got the one and five. All right, so all these are part, all the things you named, they're part of the reasons why people would think, can the Giants recover? No, because it's too many real things. If it was just Odell, you'd been like, yeah, a team can overcome a guy's comments. But no, it's a lot of things. But one thing you can add to it is he is not being a positive leader. So you must add that to the pile of things where why their season potentially could be already over with in, in the middle of October. It's on the table also that Odell maybe thinks that this is helping the team, that he's getting fired up, that he doesn't think there's enough emotion on this team, that he's the one that's going to say, okay, maybe you don't like the way I do it, but I'm going to be out there showing you that I want to win more than anyone else. Is that is that possible? That's what he's thinking? Right. This is the thing. And Odell Odell's just got to get over himself. Odell is very, very selfish. Most wide receivers are, myself included. So when you talk about people being selfish, I can identify it like a red nose on someone's face. And this is what this is about. When you're trying to talk about emotion, yes, he should be the emotional leader. But you got to lead that team emotionally for good. A lot of that emotion, too, is about look at me. It's about optics. This is not a game that requires some of the antics that he does. Did he think he need to play the game? No, because I've seen him play his best football before he started doing all these things. Odell has evolved in. Let's go to the boat trip, all right? When he decided to, to take with a bunch of guys to go to Miami before the playoff game. What has Odell done on the football field since then? All right, since he ain't part of the problem with the New York football giants being one and five, since then, have we seen the best football Odell can play? Or have we seen a guy that we're talking about other things? And I would say that we're talking about a lot of other things. Well, listen, a couple things. I don't think it's, I, I, it, I didn't say he's not part of the problem. And I don't think anyone is saying you can't have your best player, your highest paid player, and the team's a disaster. Everyone is a part of the problem. Every, the, the one guy who maybe is uh, skirting on this and should is Saquon Barkley. The other a, 52 guys were not doing interviews, though. Right. See, that, that's why I'm, the, the interview is the only thing he's done that is part of the problem. His play, the one thing John Mara said that I thought was unfair is a little more playing. I don't, a little more playing, a little less talking. I don't think anyone can make the argument through six games of the season that even 1% of the Giants' problem has been Odell's play on the field. I understand he dropped that pass on fourth down. He muffed the punt. I get that. He hasn't played a perfect season. But their issue is not his play on the field. Their issue with him is the interview and the, the histrionics on the side. The question is, what's our reaction to what the ownership said about the star player? All right? So we can sit here and blame, blame this, blame that. It's not our fault that the owner is at the owner's meeting, comment about the guy, that how much money did he give him, Jenna? Right, almost $95 million. But you think John Mara wants to talk about Odell? You think John Mara wants to answer questions about Odell? John uh, Mara would much rather talk about the fact that there's a lot of blame to go around. No. The t yes, I, they Jenna, he wait took a, second, a lot wait of second. criticism. What, what do you think he'd he rather do? He a lot do? of criticism for, for, for sticking with Odell and believing that there was gonna be no more antics and, he's, and this is the promise that Odell made, I'm gonna be a team leader. That's the last thing he wanted to do is, is face a little crow and say he's got to be talking. Okay. He's got to do a little more football, a little uh, less talking. Of course talk. he would rather be talking about the team being 5-1 and one than 1-5. No, no, and five. no. But th let me answer your question. Do I think John Mara would rather, right now, be able to lay this at the feet of Odell rather than lay it at the feet of Eli Manning deteriorating as a quarterback? I don't think Absolutely. that's the two choices. That's not the, that's not the argument here. But, uh, that's what, hold on. That's the question Jen asked. No, it isn't. It's not Eli or Odell. It's it, we're, we're struggling as a team or it's a this is really Odell's fault. He went out of his way. This was Odell. It's no different than anyone else getting an evaluation. We as employees, we get evaluated all the time. Are they happy with what you're doing? The guy that owns the business said, I'm not happy with what you're doing. And if Odell, if he's smart, 
He wouldn't listen to a whole bunch of people. He would listen to what the owner's saying because the owner holds his future. I wouldn't be listening to people outside of football who don't know what's going on. When my boss tells me, gives me a direct order to do something, that's what I would be about doing. And I wouldn't be about making a whole bunch of excuses about it. All right, we're going to talk a lot more about this. We have Mark Schlereth joining us. We have Eric Mangini joining us. But coming up oh, on I the know other Coach side. Mangini is way <laughs> different than me. I just.